It's a beautiful day, so I thought that I would bring you down to the woods for this intro and outro. So this process started when my friend got in touch with me and asked if she could commission me to make her a dress. So this was my first commission. Very exciting. Yeah, basically last year she was in a car accident which broke her foot. So she said that she wanted something made to measure for her to give her a little boost. And I was absolutely over the moon to take on the project because that's what I want to be doing with my time. You know, I want to be putting women in things, people in things that make them feel good about themselves. So I started off the process by making a bodice block, which I'll link down below the video that I used to do that. And then I just kind of adapted it for my design, uh, which was something like this. Then I made what they call in the industry a toile, which sounds really fancy because it's French, but it's just a rough draft. And I won't show you that whole process because <laughs> this video is going to be 10 million years long if I do. I sent off the toile and it was too tight on the old boobies. Um, so I just made some modifications to the pattern and then I started on the actual fabric. She said that she wanted the koi carp fabric because she's koi. I cut out the pattern pieces. What I tried to do was just place it, not necessarily so that everything matches, but just so that the kind of best bits of the design align with the body in a way that's like flattering. Voice over Zoe here. All I'm doing there is just outlining the seam allowance, cutting it out and transferring the darts. Transfer the darts using pins, which I can see through the tracing paper. I just put them all in place, line them up and then draw the darts on with a ruler. On this next part I actually did pattern match because it was the back where the zip's going to be and uh, I thought that was quite an easy place to match up so I just folded back the seam allowance and then I pinned it down so that the fish all match up there and then just lined up my pattern piece. I did try to do a similar thing with the waistband but I'm not sure it actually worked in the end. But hey, A for effort. Then I just start to fold the rest of the fabric and measure the length that I want for the skirt and I folded it back and cut it out and then I measured the width. I think the measurement for the skirt was like twice the measurement for the waist because I'm going to pleat it later. I decided that I wanted to make it fully lined and interfaced so I cut out the interfacing from the same fabric and the lining from this polyester black lining fabric. And just outlining, making sure I've got my seam allowance in place so that I can sew along it really easily. And popping the darts on the lining just by measuring, they have the same measurements as the actual fabric. Um, I pin everything down when I fold it so that nothing moves around whilst I'm cutting it out. And then I just moved on to the skirt. The skirt lining is not exactly the same as the outer skirt, so I just did it using her measurements. Now with pinning the darts, what I do is I put the needle in one side and then I poke it through the other side. I grab the top of the triangle and then I kind of rest my pin against the line and roll with my fingers until it comes through on the other side, exactly on the line. And this just makes it really easy to sew accurately. and then you just sew right down the line. Then when I got to the end, I just slowed down and tried to make it as gradual as possible and make sure that the last stitch goes off the edge. And this is what it looked like. Then I just needed to flip the lining so that it was right sides with the facing upside down and then sewed along this curve, which was a bit tricky. All I had to do was just start from the middle and work my way outwards on each side, and it's just a case of wiggling the fabric together until it looks right, just stopping every couple of centimeters. And I just made sure I snipped it in the middle so that the corner laid flat. Then I just trimmed the seam allowances, and put little snips along the curve so that it lays nicely. 
pressed it and top stitched it. And now it's time to start putting things together. So I pinned the bodice together, right sides together. How many times can I say together in one sentence? And then sewed down the sides and trimmed off the seam allowance. That's what it looked like. And then it was time to move on to the skirt, which I hemmed, folded it twice, pinned it and took it to the sewing machine. Then I just had to cut down the back where the zip is going to be and pin both pieces together, sew them up, you know, the drill. And then it was time to attach the skirt to the bodice. So they had to go right sides together. So what I did was shove the bodice right sides out inside the skirt. I pinned it at both seams and then found the middle and just made sure that everything was all lined up before shoving it through the machine. And that was it for the lining. This is what it looks like. I put little bits of iron-on um, facing along the straps and the neckline um, and the waistband and the bottom of the skirt just to kind of stiffen those areas. I wanted to put it on the bottom of the skirt so that it would help the skirt keep its volume and kind of stick out a little bit because we both agreed that we liked the kind of vintage silhouette for her. It just looks really good on her. So here are the bodice pieces. I already did the darts off camera because uh, we did that pretty detailed before. So again, I just put the sides of the bodice right sides together like we did with the lining. And then I put it through the machine, uh, keeping an eye on the seam allowance, making sure all the measurements are still the same. And then I ironed it open to make it flat, the seam, and cut down the seam allowances. Did the same with the waistband. Then it was time to put the waistband onto the bodice. I just started by lining up the side seams and then pinning it together upside down. That, once again, went through the machine and then I trimmed down the seam allowances. And here's how it looked. It was then time to start with the skirt and to make a skirt uh, voluminous you have a few options. I chose to pleat mine so I just made a mark every inch down the top of the skirt and then pinned together. I then sewed those pleats down in place and ironed them. Here's me just ironing the seam allowance for the zip and then pressing down the pleats so that they look really neat. So seeing as the skirt lining is not going to be actually attached to the skirt I decided to do French seams. So the first step with the French seam is to put the fabric wrong sides together, which is the opposite of what you normally do. Uh, so there's me pinning it in place and then you sew typically with a 0.5 inch seam allowance, but I'm a rebel. Trim the seam allowances, turn it inside out, then iron down the seam and then sew straight down next to the seam so that all the raw edges are encased and that is how you do a fringe seam. So I just tried to put the waistband onto the skirt and there's a size discrepancy. This mass is just completely beyond me. So my boyfriend helped me figure out what to do. I'm just gonna have to put another pleat in the middle. Like that, so it's kind of coming from the, the middle. So I'm just gonna quickly put that through the sewing machine and then I'll show you how to attach the waistband to the skirt. So similarly to how we put the waistband on the bodice, um, I'm going to attach the waistband to the skirt so it needs to go upside down, right sides to the skirt like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to first find the side seam of the bodice and the side seam, that French seam of the skirt and I'm going to try and line them up as best as I can. And pop a pin in. Same on the other side. I've got the two side seams pinned. I can try and find the middle uh, by putting them together and then just making that waistband match the skirt. That looks about right to me. And then I kind of do the same again, just halfway to halfway until I'm all the way around. 
So every time I get to a pleat, I'm just like straightening it out, being really careful. And then whizzing on by here, um, I'm just pinning the invisible zip to the back of the dress. We're getting close to the finish line. So I'm really nervous because I'm about to put in the zipper and I've never used an invisible zipper foot before, but I'm gonna give it a go and just keep remembering that that's what they invented the seam ripper for because you can get it wrong and it's okay. You can just undo it and try again. <laughs> I'm sweating. Um, no, this is actually okay. This is actually a little bit easier than I thought. Oh. Last bit, I'm just gonna clip the seam allowances down where they're not quite straight. Beautiful. Can you see it? Can you see it? Can you see it? <laughs> Those of you who watch Grace Helby. Okay, so now I think I just twist it in the... This is where you find out if you've sewn it on the right way around or not. Oh yes. <gasps> what a beauty. Look at that, you can't even see it. That is why they call it an invisible zipper, isn't it? So you've got this. So the nice American lady told me that I pull the zip away from the seams and then I bring these two pieces together. Pin these bits together. So now I have to sew from just at the edge of that stitch there and join it down to there. How are you meant to get the flat next to the... <laughs> so that's that. And this is what it looks like on the other side. And some of the fish even match up. Woohoo! Added bonus. So nearly finished. I'm so close to finish. I'm just gonna start uh, pinning the lining in. I'll link below the video of how to actually do this, but basically you have to pin the neckline together, the sides of the straps, but leave the shoulders open. So you're basically just pinning all the way around the top of the dress, but just leaving the shoulders alone. I've got it all pinned. The lining is folded back there with the, oh, fluff. <laughs> with the zipper teeth just poking out on the other side and then just stitching it together and once you get to a corner you just lift up the presser foot like that and turn it round so that you can pivot nicely um, and remembering not to sew up the shoulders. Every time I get to a corner I'm just marking my seam allowance off with a little fabric pen so that I know where to start. It's got jammed. As I've gone over these, ooh, as I've gone over these slightly thick bits where the seams are, I was going over it really slowly with a hand crank and it's like not even that thick. And if anyone knows why it does that, can you let me know in the comments? Because this is like so, it's just not, it just won't come out. <sighs> we recovered. Well, I did it. I got all the way around. I think I'm gonna leave it there for tonight. I think it's time for a glass of vino and an episode of Drag Race UK. It's a new day, I'm fresh as a daisy, and it's time to clip the seam allowances of what I did yesterday. Oh hey. So that pleat that I put in the middle uh, doesn't quite look like it's in the middle. I'm, go I'm gonna unpick it really carefully. They seem to be even now. So I'm gonna sew that back together now. Oh. It's time to get ready for understitching. You can see this side is the lining side and this side is the face, the shell, whatever you want to call it. So you just have to press so that the seam allowance here is facing towards the lining side so it stays like nice and um, crisp and doesn't like roll the lining out at any point. 
lots of ironing footage for you ironing fans out there. Riveting. I trimmed the seam allowances down so tiny. Why did I do that? Understitching is going to be a nightmare. So yeah, a few mistakes along the way. That's to be expected. This is like the third dress I've ever made, I think. Five hours later. Hi. <laughs> so I pressed, pressed it. Oh, it doesn't look beautiful. Um, and now I need to join the shoulders. So let's do that. Fold this one in. The back one like that and then you put the front one inside the back one don't be dirty and then you reach up inside the back of the sleeve and you grab uh, grab both pieces uh, Try that again, reach up the back and then you pull it through the back. Oh, like this. So it gives birth to itself. And then you just sort it out, I think, so that it's not, so it doesn't look like that. I didn't film that because it was just really fiddly. I could barely see it with my own eyes. That's nice and trim now. And then you should be able to the right way out and oh my goodness would you look at that it's a straight it's an armhole so I did, <laughs> I did some boring stuff off camera I finished the skirt lining seams with a French seam so that they don't like fray a whole bunch because the lining fabric frays a lot and I also pressed the seam allowance down where the lining needs to get sewn onto the zip by hand. So I'm just gonna pin that, do a bit of that tonight, and then tomorrow I'm gonna actually finish this bitch off. So I've just spent the last hour hand stitching the lining to the zip. So now it's time to do it on the other side. I don't have anyone here to help me film this, so the tripod is in my boobs. I hope you all appreciate that. Um, what I'm doing is a slip stitch. So what you have to do is get the needle inside the kind of fold of the fabric and then bring it back up like that so that you've gone like through that way. And then where that went out of there in line with that, you just pick up a tiny little bit of the other fabric, which is the zip tape, like that, and then you can pull it all through, like that. We're moving on to the last bit, y'all, the hem. So I folded it over twice and pressed it, and I'm going to do a blind hem. So that means that I have to fold this again, this way until it looks like this. I just did a trial run and it turned out okay. This is my first time using a blind hem foot. First times all around. So this is what it looks like. It's got this like adjustable guide here that you line up next to the fold of the fabric and it's on this type of stitch so that, oh my God, my nails are <laughs> So that like these little pointy out ones just very slightly catch this fabric here So after the hem all that's left is the finishing touches and um, here. I'm just hand stitching the lining to the skirt and Enough babble and bollocks from me. Here's the grand reveal Doing a little twirl for us You look stunning. You look absolutely stunning Jordan. I am overall really happy with how it came out. It's definitely the most professional thing I've ever made. This took about 40 hours, um, including the toile, like a little bit over 40 hours. And 
I am so glad that I spent all that time on it. I wouldn't take a second back. In terms of like the cost to make it, um, like materials and postage and delivery and all that kind of stuff, it cost about 45 to 50 pound to make. I just can't wait to dress more people and see more happy faces and more twirls. I would really appreciate a, a follow on Instagram. Um, it's at handmade by ZB. If you like what you see, if you like my work, feel free to send me a cheeky DM and I would absolutely love to make something for you. If you like this video, please like it, leave a comment, subscribe, whatever your jam is, it's all free. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Goodbye.